Hi folks, Mark Armitage here and I'm really excited to show you a microscope that I just sold to a customer and I'm going to do a little bit of a demo here on this and show you some of the benefits of this microscope as I take it apart. Yeah, I know I'm still wearing uh, some Christmas bling. Christmas is uh, gone uh, and past. Uh, we're into 2016 now. And, uh, but technically it's Epiphany, Three Kings Day, and since I grew up in Latin America, Puerto Rico, and uh, Venezuela, uh, we celebrated Christmas right up to Three Kings Day, so uh, I guess I reserve the right to wear some Christmas bling uh, even into 2016. But uh, as you can see, uh, this is a special microscope with a special illuminator up on top and a, and a lamp house. You can see all the light coming out of this lamp house. Uh, it's a very bright uh, light source and very hot. This is a mercury burner as we call it, a mercury burner and it burns a little hot and so this this lamp house is hot to the touch and so uh, the first thing we have to do before we deconstruct this microscope and I show you the features of it is to turn off the power supply. So we're going to let it cool, let all this cool down and then we'll proceed through a little demonstration of how this microscope works. Microspecialist of Thousand Oaks, California is the authorized importer and distributor of Helmut Hund Wetzlar German manufactured microscopes. These are microscopes that are designed to exacting German standards and manufactured to high German quality craftsmanship. Anybody can ship you a microscope in a box, but Microspecialist delivers, installs, trains, maintains and troubleshoots all of our microscopes. We have a full range of German manufactured microscopes and cameras available for most every application. Call us at 1-800-WOW-MICRO. Now we will continue with our short demonstration of the Helmut Hund H600 epifluorescent microscope supplied with an HBO100 mercury burner for intense illumination. You see a blue camera on the top of the microscope that will not be discussed in this video. All right, uh, we have turned off uh, the illuminator as you saw previously, and now the lamp housing is nice and cool to the touch, as is the vertical illuminator. Uh, and so now we can begin to remove things uh, from the microscope. Uh, now, the first thing we have to do is unplug uh, both the transformer for the vertical illuminator and the transformer for the microscope. Uh, before we do that, let me just give an overview of this microscope. Uh, this is called the Hund, Helmut Hund uh, from Wetzlar, Germany, H600 laboratory microscope. Uh, it's a standard upright light microscope. It's got an illuminate, illuminator in base, 6 volt, 20 watt illuminator. Uh, it has a condensing system on a condenser rack, and you can see me rack this up and down. And so your transmitted light condenser is here. You have a large mechanical stage, which has a low position control. Uh, you can't see it from your angle, but it's a nice low position control. Uh, it has a uh, stage uh, clip, a slide clip that you can put your slide in, and a quadruple nose piece, so you can have up to four objectives uh, on the nose piece. Uh, in this case, we have a 10x, a 40x, and then a 100x oil objective, which means you have to use a drop of oil on your slide that you uh, put the lens into. It actually makes contact with oil on the slide uh, because the oil acts as, as sort of an intermediate lens uh, in between the objective and the specimen. Uh, and so this is the vertical illuminator, which we'll talk about with the lamp housing. And uh, here I have a binocular head with a trinocular port. So this is actually called a trinocular head. And I have a camera here for capturing digital images. And so first things first, we will unplug our power supply and uh, let that cable go. And then we will unplug the microscope over here. And so now there's no danger of any electricity coming through here and shocking us. Uh, now the advantage to a fluorescent microscope is that you can use specialized filters and here I have a filter carrier uh, with two different filter sets in it. The center position is a blank position and so uh, you can have in this case uh, 
uh, what's called a blue set for FITC and then a set for TRITC, TRITC. And uh, these names go along with the kind of test or dyes that are used to perform the immunofluorescence. And so here I have a block with two filter sets in it. And here I have a block with four filter sets in it. And uh, we can actually make these as long as you would like them to be. But at some point, they can get a little too long. And uh, then they become cumbersome. So in this case here, we have a filter set uh, that has four filter blocks in it. And uh, for some reason, I'm not putting it in right. It's not sliding in. But this does slide in there, trust me. And so uh, in this case, I have uh, green fluorescent protein, Texas Red, M Cherry, Rhodamine, and DAPI. And so uh, all of the filter sets available uh, can go into this microscope. And, uh, and so that's the advantage of this epifluorescent illuminator. And so we will, we will uh, follow our sequence here. And the next step after taking out the cables is to remove the cable, the power cable, that goes from the transformer over to the lamp house. And so in this case, we just unscrew this and slide it straight out. And now we can set the transformer aside. Uh, as we continue our deconstruction of the microscope. Now, uh, many uh, fluorescent microscopes today are using LED lighting technology. And uh, those are useful to a certain extent, but in a case such as this, as a research microscope where there are many filter sets used, uh, you want to have the brightest light source available for these filter sets. And so in this case, we have what we call an HBO 100. This is a high-pressure mercury burner. Uh, I would take it out of the lamp house and show it to you. Uh, but it, it, it's explosive. Uh, if you're not careful, if you drop it, it can explode. Uh, and so uh, we're not going to take it out now. So you want to handle the lamp housing uh, very carefully. When you install the bulb, you want to use gloves so you're not leaving uh, thumbprints, fingerprints on the bulb. And uh, there's other precautions that you want to take. Uh, for example, when you first uh, turn on the transformer, you want to let it run for at least an hour to get a good burn in on that bulb. But this is a nice bright illuminator. I'm just going to release the lamp housing now from the vertical illuminator and you can see here it just comes away and this is a very robust, it's actually a very heavy metal uh, lamp house with the mercury burner in it uh, and these have been known to explode inside the lamp house and a lot of the manufacturers today are going to a plastic lamp house uh, and in this case if you do have an explosion of your bulb it completely demolishes your lamp house but here with a metal lamp house the chances of that happening are very remote. However, you just want to handle this very carefully uh, because it is expensive and, uh, and you can damage the bulb if you're not careful. So I'm just going to gently set this down uh, as we continue. Now again, I mentioned uh, that we have a camera on our trinocular head. And one thing that's important when you install your camera onto your trinocular head, leave it there. Don't take it off. Uh, folks who take the camera on and off are begging for trouble because they're introducing all kinds of dirt into the optical system and you may not see that with your naked eye but it will show up on the film plane or in this case the digital image plane and so once you uh, secure your camera uh, to the trinocular head leave it in place don't take it off and uh, but this is a nice robust trinocular head again this is all German craftsmanship and so uh, again, it's very heavy, it's, it's very high quality, and so uh, the German manufacturing system uh, is very good at producing very robust microscopes and equipment. And so, uh, so there you have it now. We have the vertical illuminator on top of the microscope, and uh, we're going to gently take this off also. So there's a loosening screw, and again, the illuminator just comes away completely. And so now, we have pretty much deconstructed the microscope. Uh, we could take off the objectives, we could take out the condenser, and uh, if you are going to ship your microscope around the country, 
uh, uh, you want to package it very well, but I would recommend that you take off the objectives and you put them in separate objective cases and you take off your condenser and you package that separately because these are quality optical systems and you don't want to hurt them in any way. So there it is. Here's the Hund uh, H600 microscope. The cable goes in here. There's an on-off switch. There's a double fuse set in there. And then on the front, you have a rheostat that you uh, rotate here in order to increase or decrease illumination. Uh, one other nice feature with this microscope is that it has a port built in to the back of the stand. This black cap here covers over a port that allows you to put a transformer, uh, or a lamp house I should say, on the back of the microscope and do transmitted light fluorescence. Some people have to do that. Or you can do very bright transmitted light, bright field or dark field. And so uh, it's a very robust microscope. Uh, Microspecialist offers it uh, at a reduced price from the price that you would pay uh, the factory. Uh, we do service these instruments. We're factory trained on servicing these. And we offered a seven year warranty, which far exceeds the factory warranty. So we stand behind this equipment. And uh, again, thank you for the opportunity to show you this system today. It's a very exciting microscope, and I was really glad to be able to show it to you. Thank you.